but you could do it in Substance Painter too. Uh, but again, I don't know why you'd really want to create a, a texture to a specific measurement. It just depends on what, what, what project you're doing, I guess. I'd say Mari, but remember you could probably do it in, um, in Painter as well. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, Hambone says, uh, wait, sorry, Unpulse 3D. Yes, Unpulse 3D is the program I'm using to do the UV mapping. Even though Max, you can do all your UV mapping in whatever 3D software you use, Blender, Maya, Max, whatever. Uh, you can get the job done inside the 3D program. Uh, but Unpulse 3D has a really nice algorithms built into it that'll do the job automatically for you much quicker. And that's why I'm using it for this project because we need to get this project done by Christmas. So I'm going to be, and I still use Unpulse 3D for my work as well. Uh, it's, it's great software, really nice for, for UV mapping, really nice, and reasonably priced too. Uh, yeah, so that Unfold 3D is used for UV mapping. You'll see me do it when we come to do this table soon. Um, I'm going to use Unfold 3D, and this is just a plug-in for it, so it opens a program automatically for me. Uh, I'm going to do that, use that program to do the UV mapping. Uh, Hambone says, oh, nice UV stuff can, can be tricky, yeah. <laughs> doing the cuts, yeah. I hate UV mapping. It's the one part of 3D modeling that I really, really don't like. It's really necessary to get a proper model to get a good texturing, but it's, I hate UV mapping. So anytime I can use a 3D piece, a separate piece of software that makes my job easier, then I'm all for it. And Unpold 3D is the best example of UV mapping software that I've ever used. And I've used them all. I've used the Yahidis UV layout, which is very good. Uh, it's made by a guy here in Australia. Uh, it's good, but the interface is awful. Uh, Unfold 3D has great interface and really good software. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be using. It's what I was using last week when you guys saw me UV, UV mapping. Uh, and ICMZ says, I wonder if he meant uh, seamless textures. Would use would use designer or painter for that? Um, um, you'd probably use designer if you want to make a seamless texture, ICMZ, yeah. Yeah, probably designer. I, again, I, I haven't played with uh, algorithmic designer. It's quite a complicated program to use, so. That, and, and again, algorithmic designer, for anyone that doesn't know, is what's, what creates these substances here, which is what you use in Painter to texture up your model. So you actually make these substances in designer. Um, and then you can bring them into Painter and use them on your models. I, I haven't played with Designer very much. Uh, GoForZenon says, with measurements I mean the bricks in the texture, not the texture resolution. That should be something like 1024 by 1024 and I ideally tiling. Uh, GoForZenon, with measurements, yeah, probably, as uh, ICMZ says, probably Algorithmic Designer would probably be the best then. Um, yeah, there really isn't anything else on the market that I can think of that could do that sort of job, apart from designer. Devrot, yeah, Devrot agrees with me. Designer or painter, yeah. Um, I'd say designer to make the actual uh, the actual um, substance itself, and then painter to actually apply it to a model or, or tile it, whatever, whichever way you want to go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because you can tile substances inside of whatever game engine you're using. They usually have a plugin that you can, where you can use the uh, SBZAR file directly without having to uh, save it out as a bitmap and, and then import it. You can actually use the, the substance directly inside the game engine. I'd say that would probably be the best bet. So designer would be my suggestion. And then painter. Um, so let's, let's talk about that question where we were talking about the glasses here these glasses over here on the little shelf and uh, they were showing up very dark now they were showing up very dark because the light here is only really being given off by the uh, particle system which you're not actually going to see until I turn it on so I will just pull back here and turn the particle system on and watch OBS freak out and drop frames um, now, yeah, we're not actually getting any light here until the particle system is turned on, and the particle system is not really affecting these glasses well. So I've actually made some adjustments so that they, they show up better, but originally they were showing up very black. 
So what I did yesterday was I actually added some emissive to the um, texture. Now that's not great. You should really not do that. You don't add an emissive to an object to lighten it up. That's unless it's a light like this. You really should not be doing that. That's that's a, I only did it so I could so we could see it yesterday and, and this morning I looked through to see if we could come up with a better solution, which is what I'm going to show you now. I'm just going to check chat here. I go for Zen and I was kind of hoping that there was some other way of learning Substance Designer. So yeah, Substance, even I don't use Substance Designer and because it's so complicated. It's, it's a nightmare. Uh, it's great, but it's a very complicated piece of software and I don't, I don't need that sort of, I don't use that sort of software enough that I want to devote the time to learn it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, ICMZ says some reason uh, I love doing UVs. I, you're the only one. I hate doing UVs. Uh, I I use Hedis UV layout, but now I have to learn uh, Maya's editor. Yeah, Hedis UV layout was the best until Unfold 3D came along. Unfold 3D now is much nicer than Hedis UV layout. It does a much better job, and Hedis is great. There was nothing like Hedis until Hedis came along, but Unfold uh, 3D does it better now. Uh, Smurfberry says you might want to get the uh, Nightshade UV Editor script for Maya. It makes it so much better. Well, there you go. Um, check out this um, Nightshade UV Editor script if you're a Maya user. I'm not familiar with it because I don't use Maya. Uh, the Handbone says uh, last 3D software question. That's all right. You, can have, you guys can ask as many questions as you want. That's why I'm on Twitch. I'm here to talk to you guys and to help you if I can. That's why we're here. We're a 3D channel. We talk about 3D. Um, uh, what's the question here? Does Max do an okay job with animations? Yes, it does. Uh, 3D Studio Max is still very capable anima for doing animation. Uh, Autodesk uh, incorporated, you can do all, all motion capture stuff. You can, you can import all your motion capture files directly into Max, apply them to a skeleton. It has a full cat system, which is a skeletal, skeletal animation system built into Max. Uh, physique, physique, I think they call it. Uh, so don't feel that if you're a Max user, it's not good for um, it's not good for animation because it is. You can you can do all sorts of animation work in in Max. It has it still has very nice animation tools. Uh, yeah, so Physique is like their um, skeletal animation thing. So yeah, no, you can certainly do animation in Max, and you can do very nice animation in Max. It's just not as uh, easy to use as maybe Maya. And maybe not as good, yeah, we'll say easy to use more than anything. You can, anything you can do in Maya, you can do in Max. Because Max still has the keyframe tool and, uh, and the mo so anything, um, like I said, that, um, where are we? The curve editor and stuff. Anything you can do in Maya, you can do in Max as well. Just as well. So, uh, if you want to learn Max and think that it's not good for animation, it is still very good for animation. Just that animators seem to prefer Maya. Really, more than anything. Viper the Sniper, good to see you. What up with you? Um, and Smokeberry says, uh, uh, Smokeberry says, is Go for Zen on talking about the textile density? And ICMG says you've been looking into Unfold 3D, you'll have to get it soon. Yeah, again, I do recommend it, guys. It's a great piece of 3D software. Um, now, I'm going to show you the website you probably should get it from because it, it's what it's confusing with Unfold 3D. It used to be it used to be developed by a company called um, uh, Poly, Polygonal Designs, I think. But then they sort of had a, a, a bit of a, a fallout with the person that made the software. And he's gone off and made his own company now, which is called Rhizome Labs. So uh, I, I suggest you probably get it from Rhizome Labs as opposed as opposed to the website called Polygonal Design. You want to get it from the website called Unfold3D.com uh, because there's a bit of a legal issue going on between those two companies over this software at the moment. I'm not up on it all. I've, I just I've, I've read about it. So uh, so this software is is incredibly good for, for doing UV mapping. You can download a free version here where you can trial it for a month. So download it and try it. You will need to register to download it, but just give them some fake email address like Yahoo or something if you don't want them to have your real email. It's generally what I do with this sort of 
registration required sort of thing. Just give them a Yahoo, throw away email, Gmail account or something. Uh, Smokery says, I thought Mammoth said had a good introduction to textual density on their site. Uh, again, I'm not, I've not, I, I know Mammoth said, but I haven't played with it much. Uh, Gay Presenter says, uh, you meant the bricks that make up the tiling texture itself, nothing to do with the dense textual density. Yeah, I thought that's what you meant. And Viper the Sniper says, Maya has more poly tools than, Maya has more poly tools than Maya. Maybe you mean Max, Viper. And there we go, Smurper has popped in a Texel Density link for you there. If that's what you are talking about. But I think uh, Gopher Zanon said no, he's not really talking about Texel Density. And Viper says uh, Max has more poly tools than Maya, rather. Okay, yeah. Again, because it was made for Archviz, so they really concentrated on, on creating good poly tools in Max. Uh, Smurpberry says once you know the textile density you should be able to go to figure out the size and pixels of your bricks to correspond to an actual physical measurement using math. <laughs> uh, so what are you posting here Sniper? Are you you doing an ad for Legmog on my channel are you? <laughs> Again, Legmog is another uh, another streamer, guys, who streams on Twitch. He uses Cinema 4D. I do suggest you check him out because he does some really nice work. He's very creative. Uh, just not if he streams while I do. But let's have a look at this link that Sniper has posted because you got me curious now, Sniper. I'm always interested to see what anyone is up to, including Legmog, even though he's cheeky, just like you, Sniper. <laughs> uh, Oh no, you did this, Sniper. Sorry, my apologies. I'm completely misreading the chat. My apologies, Sniper. Sniper created this in Blender, inspired by Legmog. Again, inspired by Legmog because Legmog is creating crystals, uh, glowing crystals for his uh, pilot episode that he's putting together. My apologies, Sniper. <laughs> you can slap me. There you go. Uh, it looks really nice, Sniper. Yeah, really nice. I like the colour. Snow uh, fudge. Uh, Gopi Zanon says, I know the physical measurements using math already, but how do I create the texture at those measurements from scratch without a photo reference? <laughs> I'm sorry, Sniper Echo. I'm sorry. I, you can slap me. I, I, I'm, I'm the naughty one now. Uh, this is Sniper Echo's work done in Blender, uh, inspired by Go, uh, Go, uh, Legmog's work, who he who, who is working in Cinema 4D. Uh, it's all very confusing. <laughs> um, uh, Gopher Zenon says with photo reference, but no photo texture I could use. Yes, I agree. Handbone, very nice colours. Uh, gonna have to eyeball. Yeah, Smurberry. Yes, Smurberry says I think Gopher Zenon, you're gonna have to eyeball it. I don't think there's really going to be another way to do it. Um, so he goes in on those the physical dimensions, uh, but he wants to know how to create the texture at those measurements from scratch without a photo reference. Yeah, I, I reckon you are probably going to have to eyeball it. I don't know of any other way you're going to be able to do it. Um, particularly without photo reference. Mm. And you want to create a tiling texture, uh, you're probably going to have to, you're still going to have to use like designer, I think. I don't think there's any other way around that. Uh, you could still probably use Mari if you, if you do want to eyeball it. You could still create a tiling texture that way. If you don't want to go and learn uh, designer, because designer, like I said, is a full on program. Uh, I, I really don't know what else I can suggest um, go for Xenon in that situation. What I would have probably done is um, use photogrammetry if it's that if, if it's that vital that the measurements are correct. I would use photogrammetry to actually create the model because with photogrammetry you can get incredibly accurate measurement models based on measurement. That's what it, it's used in forensics in the police department. They use photogrammetry to take pictures of you know you know people's footprints and all that type of thing if they're investigating a crime scene or whatever. 
they use photogrammetry because it's incredibly accurate for measurement work. That would be the best way to do it. But if you don't have access to the original object and you can't take photos to make a photogrammetry object, you're either going to have to eyeball it uh, and then uh, using Mari or something or use designer to actually create a, a material that way. Uh, Go Presenton says, would it be okay if I sent you an email on the matter with some images showing you what I'm trying Yeah, it certainly would be. Please do. Uh, email me, phil at phildoes3d.com um, and I'll check it out and I'll, I'll reply to you via email. Do that, Go Presenton. It always helps me if I can see what you guys are talking about. Sometimes I'm, I'm not quite sure. Yep, please do do that, Go Presenton. Send me an email. My email address is below my Twitch page here on my, in my panels. It's just phil at phildoes3d.com. So you can find me that way. Go to my website, but my email address is in the panels below my Twitch stream here. Must have a drink, I've got a bit of a dry mouth. Alrighty, and that goes for anyone else. But if you want to show me something and you don't want me to talk about it on stream or show it on stream, feel free to email me. Um, you can message me on Twitter or, or you can send me a whisper on Twitch as well, but I generally prefer an email. Dev right. <laughs> Uh, let's get back to these glasses, shall we? Uh, I think that's what's, uh, anyone watching my channel that may be wanting to know what I did here. Uh, let, let's go into the material, because I've actually still got the emissive material turned on. I've got to turn that off. So, um, interior, this one here. So yesterday, we were using an emissive material to, to give it a bit more, to, to lighten them up because they were too dark. I'm going to break that link because I don't, we really should not have an emissive material on something like a glass. That's just not good. Uh, now what I have done since yesterday though is I have uh, just uh, pumped uh, a value into the refraction to simulate glass a bit better. Apart from that, nothing else has changed. So we just have our texture and our base color. We have a constant value for the opacity using a transparent material. Now the way to actually get this to show up, uh, hang on. I think it may be complaining because I didn't uh, save my texture, perhaps. There we go. Sometimes the shader in Unreal can be a little bit uh, temperamental. Now we'll save it. Um, so yeah, adding an emissive material is not a great way to do it unless you're creating a lampshade or something that's supposed to be emitting light. You should not add emissive. Um, the better way to do it, which is what I've done here now, now we have no emissive material, no, no emissive on the material, yet the glasses look lit, or look bright. And that's because what I've, what I've done here is I've added a light, but you'll notice the light is not affecting anything else. All that light is affecting are these glasses. And I've done that by going into the uh, lighting channel inside of the object, inside of the glass itself, or whatever mesh it is you're using. Uh, lighting. Let me just wait, here we go. Uh, under, in, in, choose the mesh, and then under the lighting tab of the mesh, under the light lighting channels. Normally it's set to channel zero, which is what every other object inside the Unreal Engine defaults to, channel zero. Um, I've turned off channel zero and set my glasses to channel one. I added a point light, which is where the candles will be. And I've changed the point light from uh, channel using channel zero to using channel one. So let me find where that is. Here we go. And again, that is under um, under light, lighting channels, it defaults to channel zero. I turn channel zero off so it doesn't affect anything else. And I turn channel one on, which corresponds to channel one here on my glass. Now I've had to do that because these candles, if I turn them on, even though they throw light, they're using particle, the, the particle system. And the particle system is not affecting these glasses. It, now, I don't know if that's because the glasses are using a transparent material, because it should affect everything in the scene, but it wasn't affecting the glasses. Uh, so to, to simulate that, I just added, like I said, a, uh, a point light, which only affects the glasses. So that way, 
when I actually, when I turn it on and we actually create our cinematic, it will look like the candelabra is, uh, is the one, is the thing that's actually lighting up the glass. Okay. So that's the best way to get around that problem. Don't add a missive to the material. Uh, add a point light and make sure the, 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 or whatever, it doesn't have to be a point light, it can be a spotlight or any, any light. But just make sure the channel only affects that object that you want lit. Uh, so that's the best way to handle that. And again, it, the light that comes from the particle system does affect, if I turn it on, we look at this uh, urn down here. It does affect the, the geometry, which it should. You can see it's, the, the light is actually affecting the table, the uh, urn. But for some reason it wasn't affecting the glasses and it wasn't I think affecting the glasses because there must be some sort of incompatibility between the light function inside the particle system and a material, a shader, that is set to transparent. For some reason the light particles aren't affecting a transparent material shader. But we can, like I said, fake it, simulate it by adding a light source that only affects those glasses. And that's a much better way to do it than trying to add a missive to something that shouldn't be a missive. It looks much more natural. You, you'll get nice shadowing doing it this way. Uh, it could be something that Epic Games have either broken in 4.18 with the particle system, or it could just be a limitation in the engine at the moment that they're going to fix. I don't know, but that seems to be the case. Uh, any 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 light that you have in a particle system doesn't seem to affect a translucent material, whether it's by design or through a fault in the program, I don't know. But we can get around it by doing it this way. Um, I'm generally not going to be adding a light source to my candelabras anywhere else in the level unless I'm using another translucent material that's not being affected correctly. All right, I'd like to leave that on all the time, but yeah, OBS really freaks out when I when I leave when I turn real time on. So uh, I think what we might do here though is. Um, I want to add two, two more plants in the hallway section here. And to keep everything nice and consistent, I think we might just add another two palm trees. I don't want to reuse this urn. I will reuse this urn in other parts of the building, but I don't want two of them in the hall here. Uh, so I'm just going to use one of the other pots that we created. So if I jump down to my indoor plants. No. Uh, I do have um, a different pot here somewhere. Got to find it. Foliage, maybe? Yes. Uh, Smokeberry says you should add that plant from Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> but then I'd have to make it, and then, you know, it's gonna, I'm going to push back our schedule by another couple of weeks, and we're not going to get it done by Christmas. We want to get this. We, everybody, I'm sure, wants to see the final cinematic from this project, which we've been working on for months before Christmas. That's, that's, that's why I'm pushing to get it all done before Christmas. Uh, so that we can enjoy Christmas and not have to come back in the new year waiting for this project to be done. But it would look cool. I agree, that plant from Little Shop of Horrors is very cool. I have two different pots here. I'm just trying to work out which one I might I like better. I'm just going to pull them both in and then I'll, I'll decide which one I like. Let's just scale this one up. Uh, which one do I like? Which one do I like? Which one would look better in this area? I think... Uh, I think maybe the green one. The green will help tie in with the green of the tile. We'll use this other one in another spot. Um, I may just make this pot a little bit bigger though, I think. Oi. I hate this scale thing in Unreal sometimes. A one for sure, one, yep. Two looks like an, uh, an outdoor pot. They're actually both outdoor pots, to be honest. I textured them up in Substance Painter, but they're actually both meant to be outdoor pots. But this, this pot I'm using here in the corner, it's meant to be an outdoor pot too. Nothing saying you can't use it in, inside as well, though. Just because it's made for outside doesn't mean you can't bring it inside. Want to fight about it? <laughs> So we'll use it inside. 
but you are quite right. They were actually outside pots. Um, let's pull in. I do actually have a few other indoor plants, but I'm thinking of pulling in another couple of these burnt palm trees just to keep a consistent look through this whole section. Um, and we'll use the other indoor plants in other parts of the building. Uh, I do have two different ferns though, so I'm going to pull, I think I used this one yesterday over in the corner. I'll pull this one in. Again, these are all fully wind animated, all that sort of goodness. You love the look of it, Hambone? Well, thank you. I'm glad you like it. We're just winging it as we go. Uh, I, I had no... Generally, when I used to work in games development, not all, I used to do some concept art as well, but uh, generally you'd work off concept work, uh, concept art. So you'd have an idea of what something is supposed to look like before you start working on it. And even though I'm redoing this building from a version I did back in UDK, uh, a lot of it we've changed around, like this... Um, this little room, wrought iron vestibule section wasn't in the original, all that sort of thing. So we're sort of winging it as we go, creating it as we go. And we're certainly that's what we're going to be doing for the furniture as well. Because I really have no set idea as to what I want it to look like. We'll just play around with stuff and see what looks good. Uh, now I could probably get away with not placing dirt in there. Um... But the dirt the, the, the dirt mesh is very low poly anyway. It's really only half a circle. So it's no big deal for us to place that mesh in there and um, have some dirt inside the pot. Just in case the camera set, tends to swing down at any stage and we see it. All right. Let's move this down over here. I want this, I think, just next to that um, art wooden arch there. <laughs> I selected the wrong thing. I want the palm tree, not the wall. And you selected the wall. There we go. Uh, now, when I made these uh, palm trees in Speed Tree, I actually made sure that one side was flatter than the other, because I knew I was going to be placing it up against a wall. So we need to um, rotate this around. More like that. And we're going to pull it down. I don't really want it above, uh, in front of my uh, light. Not too much in front of my light anyway. Uh, the other reason I think this pot is better for this whole section is because it's it's high and narrow as opposed to this one which is uh, squat and fat. So I can, um, it, it's not going to stick out into the hallway as much as that round one would. Now I know we're getting some intersection into the wall. We may not, uh, we may not be able to do anything about that. Uh, I don't think it's going to be noticeable during the cinematic when that's moving. We're just not going to see the bit that's uh, inside the wall here. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to create a blueprint of this so I can maybe reuse it in other parts of the building. It'll just make our life much easier. Uh, models, indoor plants. Uh, we'll call this one palm tree pot one prefab uh, the handbone says care to share a little bit of how you set up how you set up the floor I see a lot of variation uh, sure yep we can talk about that 
Um, the floor sections here were textured up in Substance Painter. So that's a piece there which has that tiled mosaic on it. This is a separate piece that's actually inside the hallway. And then we have uh, separate pieces here for the uh, side rooms, either side. Um, so basically this is just one mesh, a plane really, that over that took into Substance Painter to create the actual uh, texturing for. And then I just add a, had added a, a very low polygon border that I turned and used a brass texture for just to help marry the two different tiled sections together to help blend them together a bit better. And you'll notice I've done that right throughout the building. So every floor in the building has this uh, brass tile or this brass border that runs all the way around the outside. Uh, again, and I've done that so that um, it just helps to blend the two different uh, textures together better by having that brass border. So the, yeah, it was uh, it was all textured up in um, Substance Painter. So they're separate meshes, but textured. Uh, then um, let's look at this uh, piece here. Now, this and this, uh, the, the only separate mesh here is this uh, border that runs around the outside. The rest of these two pieces are one mesh. So we've got one mesh, which is the green tile and this checker green tile here. And then I have a very low poly mesh on top, which is the border that runs around the outside. And I could have done it in a texture, but having it as a mesh, we have a bit, we, we pick up a really nice um, reflection of the light. So when our camera moves through, when during our cinematic, we'll get a nice reflection and gives us a bit of height, so a bit of shadowing. Um, if, you, if you try to incorporate it in the texture on one plane, it's going to start to look a bit fake. It'll look very flat and you're not going to pick up this nice um, light gleam that we get. Not as well anyway. But apart from that, it's it, the actual rectangle is one plane and then the border is low poly uh, border as a separate mesh on top. And then just all attached together as one, one object and taken into Substance Painter and textured up. And we've reused the same brass texture here all the way throughout the building. So even though we have brass on all of our floor, it's all using the one low, uh, low resolution. I think it's only 256 by 256 pixels, the brass texture itself. And we just reuse it on and tile it. We tile the texture and reuse it all the way uh, on all of our floor pieces, uh, which is why generally on a floor piece like this, if you're using brass, that should be a lot scuffed up a lot more than that. We could have done that, but that would have meant that we would have had to have created a separate texture for every different piece of floor that uses that brass. Uh, doing it this way allowed me to use a really low resolution texture, tile it and reuse it. But if more realistic would be to have it scuffed up and scratched because people have been walking on it. It really would, should not be that clean. Uh, again, though, our camera is probably never going to get down that low to it, so we're, we're still going to fly our camera through like this, so we can get away with faking it like that. But if you were going to take your camera right down, right next to this, I would suggest you you actually scuff that up a bit. It's way too clean. Yeah. But I, yeah, I, again, I wanted to save on texture memory and um, reuse the same texture over and over again. We're going to duplicate this to the other side. And I'm just going to rotate it so that we can so we can fake the fact that we've actually duplicated the same plant again. People won't notice. With things like palm trees like this, because they're such a, a, an irregular shape, people will never notice things like that. Trust me. People are not of that people aren't that observant. They really aren't. You'd be surprised the things that people don't notice. Just gonna make sure it's out from the wall and about the same distance as this one. And yeah, that looks good. Alrighty. 
Uh, aside from that, the only other thing I want to do in this room is I do want to turn off the shadow casting for these um, wall lights because this shadow that's being cast on the floor is really unnatural. So uh, I don't want to turn shadow casting off on the light source because I still want nice shadows to be cast uh, on other parts of our building. But I don't want that, that really stark shadow that's being cast from this uh, iron part of the light down onto the floor. So instead of turning off the shadow on the actual light, I'm going to turn off the shadow on the mesh. And just under lighting, it's got this tick for cast shadow. I'm going to turn that off to get rid of that shadow. I'm going to have to do it on all of them. So now we don't have that really fake looking shadowed line being cast from our um, wall lights. We have to do the same thing though on these ones over here because they're doing they're casting a shadow as well. Um, we also have one just over two just over here on the store to do. I see OBS dropping frames. It really hates Unreal. I want OBS devs to fix their program. There's something wrong with it. It never used to do this, not until the latest updates to OBS. So whatever they changed in the new versions of OBS is, um, it, it's not using the video card properly anymore like it used to. And I've told them, they just won't believe me. I'm not, I'm not any high, I've told them. Many people have told them that there's a problem. Okay, I, I really don't think this little hall section here needs anything else. Uh, if anything, I may add a rug, but we'll look at that after we've got more furniture placed. Um, I, uh, I may add something in this little vestibule. I'm just not sure what yet. So I'm just I'm going to turn particles on and uh, so we can see everything moving properly but be prepared that uh, OBS will drop frames. So just so we can get a better idea of what this little section is looking like, I'm going to turn real time back on. And you'll watch me turn into a slideshow on my video, on my uh, webcam. And we'll just give them the, um, the wind a minute or two to pick up so that our plants start moving. Uh, now I'm already noticing a bit of a problem here in that our fern is intersecting our um, our wooden piece here. It's actually going through the wood. So that's not great. So I think what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to turn that off. And while, I no while I've noticed this, I'm going to move this um, forward a little. Actually, I think sitting it here on this green part of the tile will probably be more natural anyway. Oi. I'm just going to look at it from the other direction to make sure it's okay. It should be fine. All right, let's turn our real time back on again so I can have a look at it. And again, I'm just going to wait a few uh, 10 or 20 seconds for the wind to pick up on the in the up uh, in the palm trees. Our candles actually do have a bit of movement on them as well. They move slightly in the particle system and also in the material. It's got like a bit of a flicker to them. The candles, the top of the candle flame. Yeah, OBS does not like it though.
I think that'll be fine though. We're going to move our camera. We're going to swing the camera through the doorway here. Uh, we'll probably do a, a tight shot on the mirror and pull back until we cut through to another camera, which will have the camera swing around and move down this way. All right, I'm just going to stop that now. So I think our little hall section here is fine. We can move on to looking at, um, I don't know, is there any particular part of the building you want me to work on next as far as furniture goes? Because all the rooms are going to need something or other. Um, let's jump into Max and let's save this so we don't lose what we've done. And let's jump, well, let's do some work in Unfold 3D, that UV mapping program. I think. Well, I could I could add more plants still in Unreal. We could continue on with adding some plants inside this outside section here. Mm. What would you guys prefer? Do you want to see me UV unwrapping and unfold 3D or do you want to see me adding more plants to the inside of the building? I'm happy to do either. Whichever one you guys would prefer to watch, I guess. Or we could do both, I don't know. <laughs> you want to see some unwrapping? Okay, let's do that. Alrighty, let's jump into Max. This is the next piece of furniture I'm going to work on uh, for the back section of that building. I'm going to place these against the back walls. Um, plus one to unwrapping and unfold, go for Zenon says. Okay, cool. Alright, let's do that. I'm just going to group this temporarily and we're going to take it into Unfold 3D. Now Unfold 3D is a separate program so you can launch it that way. You can save your model as an FBX or an OBJ, launch the program and import it. But they do offer a free plugin on their website that you can download. So if you go to their, I think it's community, yeah, it's only available for Cinema 4D and Max at the moment. 